सदन की कार्रवाई नहीं शुरू करूंगा गवर्नमेंट फील्स द एक्ट विद वेंशंस फिर मैं आपसे आग्रह कर रहा हूं आप अपनी अपनी सीट पर जाकर बैठे प्रश्नकाल महत्वपूर्ण समय होता है हर विषय पर हर महत्वपूर्ण मुद्दों पर आपको चर्चा करने का अवसर दिया जाएगा ये क्या उचित है सदन में मैसिव गवर्नमेंट वर्सेस ऑपोजिशन वॉर सस्पेंडेड एमपी काउंट एट 141 फोर्टी वन नाउ Opposition Mukt Parliament. That is our top focus on Five Live. This number of members of Parliament has never ever been suspended before. Viewer, a hundred and forty-one. It's truly. a shameful and troubling day for indian democracy i'm shiv this is five live i'm going to take you through that story as always the headlines first prime minister modi condemns opposition protests in parliament claims india allies siding with parliament breach accused prime minister roars bjp will fill the opposition's empty seats by 2024 Crucial India huddle in the national capital underway with 27 opposition parties in attendance. Seat sharing formula for upcoming 2024 polls tops the agenda. These are images from the meeting. Big boost for the Hindu Hindu side in the Gyanwapi dispute. Allahabad High Court rejects all pleas by the Muslim side challenging the suits filed by the Hindu worshippers. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal to skip enforcement directorate summons on December the 21st in the Liquor Gate probe cites annual meditation retreat as his reason. Australian pacer Mitchell Stark becomes the most expensive buy in IPL history. Kolkata Knight Riders pick Stark for a whopping 24.75 crore rupees. you are 141 members of parliament suspended from both houses is a very troubling milestone in our democracy no matter which side of the political divide you stand no amount of ifs or buts justifies this ugly impasse that will now color the entire road to the 2024 election in a furious political environment where the rules of engagement appear to allow just about anything The acrimony and hostility between the government and opposition has reached the kind of low even we in media are surprised by and believe me there isn't a lot that surprises us journalists but something happened today that confirms suspicions of cynics that the revolt by the opposition has gone beyond a principled protest over the parliament security breach because amidst this angry exchange at a time when principled indignation should have been the dominant visible emotion the suspended opposition handed their critics the juiciest way to debunk and question their seriousness it was this video which you've probably all seen by now that's trinamool mp kalyan banerjee play acting and mimicking vice president jagdeep dankar while a gleeful audience including congress mp rahul gandhi whips out his mobile phone to record amidst loud laughs and applause first of all kalyan banerjee's imitation uncanny objectively if he's ever tired of being an mp he definitely has prospects in theater and i mean that as a lover of the arts and i mean that very sincerely but what did this actually achieve to talk about more serious things If social media is any barometer of sentiment there's almost universal jeering at these jolly theatrics on the steps outside parliament even supporters of the congress and its allies have said this doesn't sit well in a hyper sensitive narrative battle where image is more than just anything it has landed and handed the bjp a full toss to paint the suspended brigade as unserious devious conniving picnickers and worst of all that all the anger and rage they display over the suspension issue is just a facade because 
Here they are on camera sitting and giggling and laughing and applauding each other. In some minds, it's having the same effect as Rahul Gandhi's famous hug and wink episode ha had in 2018, where the seriousness of Rahul Gandhi's gesture was totally derailed by the wink that came after. Personally, none of this should matter. Let me say that categorically. Narrative shouldn't be everything. MPs should be allowed to express themselves exactly how they want to. And comedy is a form of protest. That's their choice. And the political import of such clips can be debated endlessly. But if there's one thing this political nation has proven over decades, it is the power of images and perception. Once the laughs and claps and mimicry subside, there's still the issue of the mass suspension. Yes, there are rules. Yes, there are norms. Yes, there are protocols. But I would like to categorically say, categorically say, viewer, that suspending MPs is the wrong thing to do. Let me repeat that. It's the wrong thing to do. Maybe someone who isn't in politics like me cannot fully appreciate the importance of protocols and rules, especially in a place like Parliament. But in my mind, a surcharged, angry atmosphere of the kind we are now seeing is an opportunity for new rules of engagement. For how long will rules be invoked to suspend MPs? For how long will there be tutu meme over past dispensations that have also suspended MPs, for instance, under Rajiv Gandhi in the 80s? In my world, the disruptions in Parliament would be permitted. That may be a controversial thing to say, for those who love rules, but let me repeat it. In my world, disruptions would be permitted. Let citizens watch. Millions of citizens are watching what happens in Parliament. I firmly believe that the spotlight on parliamentarians inside the House is precisely what will temper the intensity and longevity of disruptions and perhaps even, hopefully, fingers crossed, engender new protocol-friendly forms of protest. I mean seriously, viewer, how long can violent placard waving and suspensions really go on for? The impulse, in my view, must be for dialogue and not for the robotic imposition of rules and protocol. In a shape-shifting political dynamic this close to elections where animosities are so red-blooded, it is time for a new way of doing things. For both the government and the opposition, being on the warpath is par for the course. Everyone knows that. But let both sides remember that the people are watching. Well, it is undoubtedly the dominant story of the day. These were the dominant images from earlier today outside Parliament. And meanwhile, right now, the India Alliance is holding a crucial, many say, make or break meeting. But to begin with, huge furor over the suspension of opposition MPs, totally justified. The India bloc's strength in Parliament has dwindled further as more MPs, a record number, was suspended earlier today for unruly behaviour and disregarding the directions of the chair. A total of 141. That's a staggering number way higher than anything that has happened in the past. A total of 141 opposition MPs have been suspended so far. 46 MPs have been suspended from the Rajya Sabha and 95 opposition MPs have suspended, been suspended from the Lok Sabha. Take a look at everything you need to know about the story so far. But to mechanically suspend all of us, I guess that's the aim of the government is to have an opposition-less parliament. It's clear they want a, a, an opposition mukt. लोक सभा क्या सोच के ये नया संसद बनाया जे इसको लोकतंत्र का कब्रिस्तान बनाना है मास सस्पेंशंस ऑफ ऑपोजिशन एमपीज गैल्वेनाइज एंटी बीजेपी पार्टीज on Tuesday, 49 members of parliament from the opposition ranks faced suspension a record 141 in this winter session alone 95 MPs suspended from the Lok Sabha and 46 from the Rajya Sabha so far. The lawmakers demanded a statement from Home Minister Amit Shah regarding last week's security breach. Their suspension attributed to alleged disruption of House proceedings. The opposition
opposition MPs held protest, chanting slogans and displaying placards against the Modi government. Modi Sarkar, down, down. Filmed by Rahul Gandhi and other opposition MPs, a suspended TMC MP mimicked Rajya Sabha Chair Jagdeep Dhankar in a mock session outside. <laughs> The BGP responded swiftly, labeling the act reckless and criticizing Rahul Gandhi for recording it. The Vice President and the Rajya Sabha Chair Jagdeep Dhankar deemed it ridiculous and unacceptable. The recent wave of suspensions was triggered by a vocal opposition demanding the Home Minister's statement on last week's intrusion. Some MPs carried placards including a morphed picture of the Prime Minister. My request is that you are going to talk to you and talk to you. These are not the same in the Sadaan. This is the Sadaan. Do you want to go to the Sadaan? आसन के ऊपर तक चल जाए। मोदी शाही मुद्दा पर। मोदी शाही मुद्दा पर। Stepping out, the suspended MPs joined by their colleagues continued their protest on the Parliament compound. Hostilities between the ruling and the opposition camps escalate sharply ahead of the 2024 Lok Sabha elections. Bureau Report, India Today. Polami Saha, who's uh, been had a had a ringside view of one of the most dramatic parliament sessions India has ever seen since independence is live with me. Polami, the kind of record, the kind of landmark, nobody would have hoped to ever see. But you were right there, uh, you know, capturing all of this. It's a video that you shot that went viral, which has become the most visible image of the day today as well of Kalyan Banerjee and all of the MPs outside parliament. But the question now is, what happens next? Uh, the 141 MPs suspended. It's almost an opposition mukt parliament polemi. Three days left in this session. What's going to happen? Well, uh, unlikely this logjam will be broken. Uh, you know, we saw that the government has, uh, you know, pushed through with its legislative agenda. Three bills have been passed since, of course, the suspension of the 49 members of parliament from the Lok Sabha today. The three very crucial criminal law amendment bills have been taken up yeah. for consideration and passage as well. Ahead of this, in fact, uh, Home Minister Amit Shah had met with the Speaker Om Birla alongside uh, Prahlad Joshi and uh, Piyush Goyal in order to see if there was any way to break this impasse. We'd been told that Amit Shah was keen that there was a robust debate as far as these three bills were uh, concerned, especially because he had chosen to send these bills to the Standing Committee on Home Affairs in the first instance. Very rarely, uh, you know, that the government uh, uh, has done this in the past. Uh, he did realize that these are, uh, you know, historic bills. They'll change the face of the IPC, CRPC and Evidence Act. And hence, uh, there should be a robust uh, sort of uh, analysis of these bills. Several amendments have been made, changes have been made based on those standing committee recommendations. But today, uh, you know, unfortunately, the situation is such uh, that there aren't uh, any opposition MPs or enough opposition MPs uh, in the Lok Sabha waiting uh, to debate this uh, bill. 15 hours have been allotted for the discussion yeah. of these three bills. Unlikely uh, that, you know, as much time will be spent. So over the next three days of uh, the remainder part of the winter session of parliament, we don't see any sort of breakthrough as far as this long jab is concerned. Definitely not good news. Polomi, continue to stay with me. Let me just uh, paint our viewers a picture of what the Lok Sabha actually looks like uh, in light of what has just happened. Now, the Lok Sabha uh, usually has 543 seats. 21 are currently vacant because many MPs have resigned after taking up their new work as MLAs in different states. Uh, that's one of the reasons, which means there are 522 occupied seats in the uh, Lok Sabha at this point of time. The BJP-led NDA has 305 MPs. The opposition MPs are 136, and the others are 66. The suspended opposition MPs number 95, which means 
the number of remaining opposition MPs in the Lok Sabha is a measly 41. 41 opposition MPs left in the Lok Sabha, which means that the India Alliance has in effect lost one third of its member of parliament strength inside parliament at this point of time. Next, let's show you what's happening in the upper house, the house of states, the Rajya Sabha has a total of 245 MPs. The BJP-led NDA has 105. The opposition has 90 MPs. Others, 36. Now, opposition MP suspended, 46. Remaining opposition MPs in Rajya Sabha, basically down by 50% to just 44. So down by a third in the Lok Sabha and down by 50% in the Rajya Sabha. Polomi, uh, a, quick, uh, a quick clarification to you. No breakthrough, you know, possible at this point of time. Is there even an attempt to kind of talk? Is there any outreach or a back channel going on between the two sides? Or is it completely frosty right now? It seems and appears completely frosty. You know, uh, there were letters that were written. Adhiranjan Chaudhary had spoken with the speaker. This is uh, at the first instance when 14 members of parliament had been suspended. Malikarjun Kharge at that point of time also, in fact, uh, wrote uh, in favor of Derek O'Brien's suspension being uh, revoked uh, from the Rajya Sabha when he was the lone member of parliament from the Rajya Sabha who had been, in fact, uh, removed. And then, of course, today, Sharad Pawar wrote to the Rajya Sabha chairman as well, asking him uh, to review and address the matter of the suspension of MPs. That, And then, of course, 49 MPs from the Lok Sabha were suspended again uh, today. So, uh, you know, given that uh, certain moves have been made by some of the tallest leaders of these parties to reach out yeah. to the speaker and the chairman, uh, but, you know, the suspensions uh, only continue uh, to grow in numbers. Uh, it seems like, uh, it doesn't seem likely that over the next three days we'll see any right. sort of breakthrough as far as uh, these relations are concerned. Okay, Polomi, thanks for putting that into perspective for us. It's a, uh, it's a story in motion, but that's the clarity. No breakthrough likely at this point of time and only three days left in Parliament. Well, amidst this entire session, Prime Minister Modi launched a rare attack on the opposition parties while Parliament is in session over these protests that are taking place. The Prime Minister alleges that the opposition parties were rattled by the recent Assembly election losses and were disrupting Parliament in frustration. I strongly condemn this. The crucial India Alliance meeting is currently underway at the Ashok Hotel in Delhi. All of the top opposition leaders are meeting. That meeting has been on for over one hour now. Remember, seat sharing between the India Alliance partners is the priority agenda item. And all eyes are going to be on this meeting to see whether there are any concrete takeaways. There has been criticism from within the India Alliance over meetings not having taken any key decisions required to be battle ready for 2024. Let's get some perspective from the ground. India Today's Rajdeep Sardesai, who leads our amazing political team on the ground. Also with us is Amit Bhardwaj, who's outside the Ashoka Hotel. Rajdeep, quickly coming to you first. Uh, are we expecting to see some 
uh, you know, definite decisions taken today, uh, uh, including some kind of clarity on seat sharing or a convener or anything like that, something that is a, you know, a big step forward, as it were, for the alliance? Well, I think, I think the one step forward likely, uh, Shiv, is uh, the seat sharing plan. Uh, hmm. The very fact that the Congress has now announced a five-member team, including uh, uh, two chief minister, former chief ministers, Bhupesh Baghel and Ashok Gelot, clearly suggest that seat sharing uh, uh, discussions, we are told, will begin in right earnest almost straight away. Uh, so, the possibility of uh, a, a seat sharing uh, timetable being announced is uh, perhaps the most likely outcome of this meeting. There have been question marks over whether a convener should be appointed, but opinion is divided on that issue. The mm. Congress in particular, Shiv, doesn't appear too willing to have a specific convener from one of the regional parties, uh, someone like a Nitish Kumar, because that would reduce their authority within uh, this alliance. So, whether they actually bite the bullet and appoint a convener as some of the regional parties like the Shiv Sena are uh, keen on uh, is uncertain. So, mm. it appears again incremental step-by-step uh, -step approach where at best what seems likely is a seat-sharing uh, discussion plan uh, being unveiled by this India Alliance. Uh, Rajdeep, I was very keen to get your perspective also on the fact that, you know, time is of course very, very short. Uh, we've seen some frictions from within the alliance, including from the JDU and the Sena. But this mass suspension of MPs, do you see this becoming something of a, a consolidating factor, something that could kind of blur these differences and be a rallying point for the alliance? Uh, to an extent, yes. There's little doubt that the manner in which these uh, suspensions have taken place across party lines will bring the opposition together and suggest that the existential crisis that some of them fear they will face uh, should they lose May 24 uh, will become even more acute in their minds and therefore mm. a sense of having to come together uh, will be perhaps more urgent. Uh, there is also the possibility that a few leaders like Arvind Kejriwal, who've been summoned by the Enforcement Directorate, find themselves in the eyes of the uh, ED scanner. And yeah. they too may be pushing, therefore, for the Alliance to take some firm steps at consolidation ship. Rajdeep, appreciate it. Thank you very much for joining me with your uh, inputs and views on this uh, developing story. The big political story of the day, the India Alliance meeting is on. Our man on the ground fronting the story for us, of course, is Amit Bharadwaj. Amit, you know, main nahi hum, uh, you know, appears to be something that you're picking up from the ground that could be one of the, uh, you know, the, the thematic elements of the India Alliance. But there is a lot of work to be done and time is short, as Rajdeep was saying the picking of a convener, the seat sharing, etc. Are you picking up any indications that there could be a clear blueprint or a roadmap going forward for the Alliance? Uh, Shiv, well, I'm inside uh, the Ashoka Hotel where the meeting is going on in the other mm. A hall right next to me and what we are given to understand right now that you know uh, the convener post is something that is being pushed by the regional players right now for sure you know as uh, Razdeep was mentioning as well it is it works very much in the favor of the uh, regional parties that there should be a convener who is able to communicate and coordinate with the uh, regional parties number one number two seat sharing is something that uh, several parties including the Samana editorial which has come today you know is very indicative of the fact that seat sharing needs to be uh, fixed that needs to be chalked out today uh, because uh, after that there are more critical questions that uh, the India Alliance will have to deal with suppose uh, for instance you know as to what is the seat sharing ratio for Bihar but which seats will you be battling on Congress RJD JDU all these parties will have to zero down the seats that they want to fight upon and the best candidates that can be fielded from that uh, uh, area so all those uh, issues needs to be uh, you know uh, touched upon and after that comes the complicated question of such as West Bengal you know or Kerala where you have uh, uh, very much the India alliance partners itself who have been at warring heads uh, in yeah. the respective states uh, for instance in west bengal you have a, a, a trinamool versus uh, left congress uh, ally, uh, you know a formula and in uh, kerala so far it's ldf udf so all these things needs to be chalked out and time is less as rajdeep right. was also indicating uh, about but i had spoken to a specific leader uh, he said shiv uh, that you know we do need to do a couple of more meetings to sort out and come mm -hmm. to the final decision so that could be uh, the key, key takeaway as well
Okay, a couple sure. more meetings, but you know, once again, the, the fact that time is short, that the, the, the campaign for 2024 kind of has already begun, officially begins sometime around February, March. That's, of course, unless uh, elections are pre-pawned. Uh, but uh, Mosmi Singh is also joining us. Uh, she tracks the Congress party for us. Uh, she's also on the front lines of this story. Mosmi, the Congress party, you know, right in the wake of, uh, you know, a disappointing performance in the Hindi heartland, appears to have, you know, dwindled their sway or their influence as far as the alliance partners are concerned. But they are still going to be trying to fight off the idea of a regional convener as far as the India alliance is concerned. How, you know, how far along are you sensing things could be as far as seat sharing is concerned? Because the perception is that the Congress's bargaining power has come down after these elections. Absolutely, uh, Shiv, you've hit the nail on the head there because uh, the bargaining power of the Congress has dwindled a lot. Uh, the position that Congress was uh, during the Mumbai meeting, uh, they have to, uh, they had to climb down from that. And uh, that really means the magnanimity uh, that was yeah. uh, uh, evident in the speeches of Malika Arjun Kharge and Rahul Gandhi, the ability to reach out and compromise and not gun for any post, that has really, you know, taken a beating because mm. uh, now the alliance partners are putting a big question mark on Congress's selfless, selfishness as far as not sharing any seats during the assembly elections is concerned and my sources tell me even right now in the meeting the assembly election results uh, are being discussed uh, uh, particularly the Samajwadi party and other regional satraps even the left yeah. could rake up that point that had there been an alliance things had would have been otherwise and at least you could have shown some unity even if not won the elections exactly i mean you know one is actually wondering about that i'm going to come back to both amit and mosmi on that precise question but before that i just want to you know paint a small picture for our viewers about why why this story why this meeting that we're reporting of the india alliance is being projected as a make or break for india i've already told you that the first reason is that there are only four to five weeks really for the 2024 campaign to start so time is painfully agonizingly short Seat sharing formula has not yet been defined, even though there is an expectation that it will happen now. There is no clear leader or prime ministerial face, even though the alliance uh, projects that as one of their strengths. There is no clear common agenda or vision that has been defined just yet. A common blueprint is still elusive. Internal fault lines from parties like the Shiv Sena and the JDU have rocked the boat a little bit right before this meeting. And like Mosami was saying, the Congress's bargaining power, its sway has come down after the state polls, as a result of which assertive satraps and regional chieftains may hinder unity of the entire alliance bloc. Amit, coming to you, the JDU and the Shiv Sena, you know, had some pretty unkind, uh, you know, hard talk. Uh, uh, you know, to do as far as the alliance was concerned, saying, you know, a year has been spent doing nothing, useless meetings, we don't even have a convener just yet. You know, uh, 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 you know a, a kind of wake-up call, as it were, has been issued by at least two members of this alliance. Has that had any kind of impact? Do you see that rocking the boat or will it actually catalyze these problems to be fixed now? Uh, Shiv, I'll call them soft punches, you know, right ahead mm. of the meeting, you had Shiv Sena editorial come, Samana editorial, uh, pointing out at uh, several points, including the, uh, you know, need for a convener, someone who can take forward the chariot of the India Alliance and also harping upon the fact that regional satraps need to be accommodated well and uh, Congress yeah. should not be looking at the bigger pie of the cake. And uh, something that has been backed by JDU as well. And that is why what we are also learning from our sources is that during the meeting today, uh, you know, some difference uh, from the past three meetings happened was that there was no opening keynote uh, uh, statement a broad opening keynote statement so clearly you know it's clear that all the parties are at par now in this particular meeting that uh, uh, that is happening sources are telling us that uh, the statements have uh, been given and uh, the issue of uh, MP suspension was also in a way, you know, discussed in this particular meeting. So clearly, mm. you know, sticking to the point, uh, uh, each party get, getting their own uh, say in the meeting, no big brother attitude is something what uh, must have been adopted in the meeting. At least that's what the sources are indicating towards.
Back okay, to very interesting. Mosmi, one final question to you. Uh, uh, you know, within the Congress party, uh, uh, you know, the party still sees itself as a first among equals as far as this alliance is concerned. You did comment on the bargaining power, uh, you know, but the sheer size and spread of the Congress party still means that it has to be the first among equals. It cannot see itself as being on the same level as parties that have regional influence like the Trinamool and the NCP and the others. How is that going to work out now? You know, somewhere, uh, Shiv, earlier when this all started, uh, way back in Patna and Bengaluru, uh, the tone of uh, the Congress party was very mellow. It was more giving, it was more reaching out and more humble. And, and thereby, you know, uh, there was an urgency uh, and expressed for need of the alliance, uh, expressed to come together, uh, mm. an intention to come together. And that was evident in what Kharge said or Rahul Gandhi said. And that's very clear. Yeah, I think they are going to uh, not really, uh, uh, they are going to bend as far as, you know, accommodating the alliance partners is concerned. Uh, there, will be, there will be hard burns. Akhilesh Yadav or the others could be a little curt. They could be a little blunt and bold. But that beating Congress will have to take because one of the leaders told me, yes, we went alone in the election. So it has to be our victory or our uh, defeat. And we will take that if the alliance partners discuss. But seat sharing uh, at the micro level state wise and of course you know the action plan for the future is what's on the cards i think this is more of a uh, icebreaker of sorts in terms of the bad drubbing in the elections, the drubbing in the elections, mm -hmm. and thereafter, you know, the Congress trying to bridge that gap that happened in the past three, four months. Akhilesh Yadav is there. What is important is all the bigwigs are there. Last time we, we saw many leaders giving it a miss, but yeah. all the bigwigs are there. I hope, uh, and one will have to wait and see what the takeaways are, but one will, uh, but uh, whether all the leaders stay back for the press conference. You know, we saw Mam marching out before the press conference last time and yes. that was when Rahul Gandhi was seated next left and right uh, to Sitaram Yachuri. So we'll have to wait and see he's seated uh, on the right of Sitaram Yachuri yet again today. We'll have to wait and see whether the leaders are together for that press conference. So it's an opportunity for another signal moment in opposition unity. We'll have to wait for that and I can guarantee you that Amit and Mosmi will be the first to break all the big takeaways that come out of this meeting. India today's number one political team, the biggest and fastest on every big story. Thanks, Mosmi and Amit, for joining me on this particular update. Now, moving on to another political development. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal will be skipping the summons issued to him by the Enforcement Directorate in connection with the Delhi liquor investigation case. He was summoned on December the 21st, but he will not be coming. This is the second time that he will be skipping summons. He will, in fact, be leaving for a pre-planned 10-day Vipassana meditation course that starts on December 19th at an undisclosed location. Here's the story. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal will skip the ED summons for the second time. The Delhi government has said that Kejriwal will leave for a 10-day Vipassana meditation course starting December 19th at an undisclosed location and will not be able to appear before ED on December 21st. A pre-scheduled प्री अनाउंस्ड घोषित कार्यक्रम है कि मुख्यमंत्री जी का कि वे 19 तारीख से विपसना पे जा रहे हैं विपसना पे प्रस्थान करेंगे हर साल जाते हैं और उस भी जानबूझकर नोटिस भेजना मुझे लगता है कि तमाम जो वकील हैं जो कानूनी सलाहकार हैं उनसे चर्चा करके आगे की कानूनी रणनीति हम लोग बनाएंगे claiming it is a witch hunt orchestrated by the Modi government. Kejriwal's party hinted that the Delhi chief minister may not comply with the ED summons, citing his scheduled Vipassana meditation. This case is a fake case, it is a fake case. It is not kept in this case. You will see that whatever the people in this country are asking for Narendra Modi ji or asking for the question, उसको मोदी जी या सस्पेंड करा देते हैं या फिर गिरफ्तार करा देते हैं केजरीवाल जी विपाशना जाने वाले हैं आप सबको पता ही होगा पहले से और कई महीने पहले ये तय हो जाता है तो अभी जो वकील है वो इस नोटिस को पढ़ रहे हैं और देखते हैं आगे कैसे होता है 
the bjp retaliated accusing the delhi chief minister of corruption ab insaaf ka waqt aa gaya arvind kejriwal ji aapki chhavi puri hone ja rahi hai aap kehte the na mujhe del del mein mukhyamantri rehna lalu ji ki tarah aapki badi soch thi badi ki mujhe to करप्ट बेईमान मुख्यमंत्री जेल में रहकर काम करना है अब आपको जेल जाने का मौका भी मिलेगा हाँ संविधान में आपको मुख्यमंत्री रहने का मौका नहीं मिलेगा लालू जी के तो चार दिन तक रह पाएंगे लेकिन दिल्ली के लोगों को इंसाफ मिलेगा और आपकी भी मनोकामना पूरी हो जाएगी दिस इज द ईडी सेकेंड समन टू डेली चीफ मिनिस्टर इन ऑलमोस्ट अ मंथ एंड हाफ अर्लियर केजरीवाल इग्नोर द समन फॉर नवम्बर सेकेंड इंस्टेड ही ट्रेवल टू मध्य प्रदेश टू एड्रेस अ पब्लिक मीटिंग ऑन द सेम डे In a letter to the ED that time he accused the agency of acting on behalf of the BJP. The ED is investigating the suspected money laundering aspect in the liquor policy case. Two of the Delhi chief ministers closest lieutenants Manish Sisodia and Sanjay Singh have been in custody for months over allegations of money laundering linked to the alleged excise scam. Bureau report India today. And after this very short break we offer you some clues on India's most wanted terrorist. We've seen what he looked like in the 80s and maybe even in 2015 but what does Daud Ibrahim look like now? We'll give you a sneak peek. politics and insights that truly matter join india today now on whatsapp with the number one election team as we gear up for the upcoming assembly elections scan the qr code on your screen now join india today now on whatsapp follow these steps open whatsapp on your phone check for a new updates tab select find channel and type india today after finding the channel tap the follow button स्पष्ट करना चाहता हूं रेजोल्यूशन मूव करने से पहले तो ये सर्वसम्मति से स्वीकृत हुआ था मैं फिर से एक बार दोहरा रहा हूं सर्वसम्मति से स्वीकृत हुआ था कि हम प्लेकार तटिया अंदर नहीं लाएंगे इसके बावजूद भी ये तटिया लाके तो अपमान कर रहे हैं चेयर का अपमान कर रहे हैं सदन का अपमान कर रहे हैं देश का जनता ने जो मैंडेट दिया है उनका अपमान कर रहे हैं जो हाल ही में तीन राज्यों का जो पांच राज्यों का चुनाव में सब ये ये पूरा पूरा चुनाव में जो इनका हाल हुआ उसके डेस्परेशन के कारण पूरा हताश होके फ्रस्ट्रेट होके ऐसे कदम उठा रहे हैं जनता इनको जो अभी चुन के आया है ये लोग ये लोग भी नेक्स्ट इसमें नेक्स्ट चुनाव में इधर नहीं आएंगे ऐसे ही बढ़ते हुए कंटिन्यू करते हैं तो इसीलिए मैं ये स्पष्ट करना चाहता हूं मान्य स्पीकर के समक्ष जो बैठक हुआ था ऑल पार्टी लीडर्स रहते हैं उसमें बीएससी में हुआ था और सब ने स्वीकृति किया था नया बिल्डिंग में नया सदन में हम तटिया लेके नहीं आएंगे वेल में नहीं आएंगे ये निर्णय हुआ था इसके बावजूद भी तटिया लेके आके स्पीकर को अपमान कर रहे चेयर को अपमान कर रहे सदन को अपमान कर रहे देश को जनता को अपमान कर रहे हैं इसीलिए बहुत दुख से यह कार्रवाई हमको करना पड़ रहा है यही मैं देश के सामने इस सदन के द्वारा मैं निवेदन करना चाहता हूं
आप क्या चाहते हो संसद का एक ऐसा इको एक ऐसे इको चैंबर में तब्दील किया जाए जहां सिर्फ आपकी जय जयकारे के अलावा कुछ ना हो लोगों की बात ना किया जाए राष्ट्र की सुरक्षा पर बात ना हो सवाल काट देते हो आप ये ये उम्मीद थी हमारी संसद से इसलिए मैं कह रहा हूं हम में से हर व्यक्ति बैज ऑफ ऑनर की तरह ले रहा ये सस्पेंशन नहीं है ये रिकग्निशन है कि हम सवाल पूछना चाह रहे हैं सबसे बड़े लोगों से सवाल पूछना जा रहे हैं और उनको ढकने की पूरी कोशिश हो रही है ढक नहीं पाओगे क्या चाहते हो विपक्ष मुक्त संसद और प्रतिरोध मुक्त सड़क दोनों में से कुछ हासिल नहीं होगा A priest is shot dead and his eyes gouged out in Bihar's Gopalganj. He was reportedly missing for the past 6 days when his body was recovered on Saturday. The victim, identified as Manoj Kumar, was working as a priest at a Shiva temple in Danapur village. Soon after the incident came to light, violent clashes between the locals and the police erupted in the area. While investigation is underway, Pranjal the SDPO said the situation in the village was under control an adequate police force had been called in Ek ladke ka shav shav mila tha usi ke aakrosh mein logo dwara road jam kiya gaya tha jisme ki logo ne road jam kiya tha kuch der aur hum logo ne FIR darj karte hue agrim karwai karenge abhi road clear ho chuka hai and it's ekdam suchari dhang se chal raha hai hum log jaanch kar rahe hain isme jo bhi doshi honge unke upar karwai karenge Attacking Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar, the BJP called the murder an ISIS-style killing. Nitish Kumar ji, please answer that what is the pressure on you that you are allowing this to happen? First in Bihar we see that the Hindu festivals holidays are cut. The students are not given holidays for that. Now the Hindu sadhu sants are being targeted. Poor law and order situation and alleged misgovernance remains a tool for Nitish Kumar's rivals to target him with. with Aditya Vaibhav bureau report India today quality today in delhi 312 in mumbai 214 in kolkata 211 in bangalore 83 in chennai 66 in hyderabad 129 Is Dawood Ibrahim dead or alive? It's been the huge buzz since Pakistan media reports yesterday. But India's most wanted terrorist is a rarely seen phantom. There are very few photographs of the 1993 Bombay blast serial mastermind. But the million-dollar question is: What does India's most wanted terrorist look like now? Well, the last known photograph of Daud Ibrahim is actually from around 2015 2016 or even a little earlier than that so we haven't had a real view of what this man looks like in the last decade or so well here comes artificial intelligence to the rescue courtesy india today's rahul gupta take a look this is how everyone pictures india's most wanted terrorist daud ibrahim The only images that exist of a man who has evaded Indian justice for 3 decades. Until 1985, Daud was one of the most infamous figures in India, but his photos were scarce. Everyone knew of Daud, but no one knew what he looked like. 
Then came this famous Daud moment, captured by India Today photographer Bhavan Singh in Sharjah in 1986. Daud and his gang members in tow, attending a cricket match between India and Pakistan. Realizing a man surrounded by bodyguards could be Daud, India Today's Bhavan Singh prepared to take a photo. Just as he was about to click, Daud's men stopped him. But Daud signaled to them to allow the photo to be clicked. This image was the result. In 2015, a rare new image of Daud Ibrahim emerged, providing the world with the first glimpse of the terrorist in over two decades. But now, amidst massive buzz over the status of Indian fugitive, you're probably wondering what the 67-year-old Daud Ibrahim looks like now. Well, India today used artificial intelligence-enabled photo software to answer that question. What you're looking at are the results. Using the handful of public domain real-life images, here's how AI has imagined Daud Ibrahim. The three phases of India's most wanted terrorist. How soon before we have a real picture of what he looks like now? With Rahul Gupta, Bureau Report, India Today. And that's, of course, if he's even alive, we don't know for sure. Daud Ibrahim, the dawn of the subcontinent, a terrorist. No matter where he is, he makes it a point to be in touch with his terrorist associates, family and even family friends, and uses technology to his advantage to avoid the taps of surveillance agencies, but not always. Here's a report of one such phone conversation he made sitting in his safe haven to a former neighbor's family in Mumbai. The dreaded terrorist, drug lord, underworld dawn from Dongri, Daud Ibrahim. Even after becoming a fugitive, keeps tracking his friends and family members in Mumbai. In a telephone conversation intercepted by the intelligence team, Daud Ibrahim can be heard talking to his father, Ibrahim Kaskar's friend and former neighbour, Majid Kalia. The Don addresses him as uncle. Salam <laughs> और आरिफ आरिफ ने कुछ करता है क्या हुआ पहचान नहीं आवाज पहचान नहीं रहे नहीं अरे दाऊद बोल रहा हूँ चचा दाऊद की आवाज नहीं है अरे हाँ मेरी आवाज है चचा हाँ मेरी आवाज है तुम चची को दो चची को दो Daud Ibrahim fled the country in the late 80s and shifted base to UAE first. After 1993 Mumbai serial blasts, he left UAE and took refuge in Karachi's security zone of Clifton. But he never stopped keeping in touch with his fellow people. Hello? Yes, Chachi. Yes, son. I don't know how much I am. नहीं उनकी आवाज भी नहीं निकलती बेटा बराबर बात भी नहीं होती है उनसे चले फिरे नहीं जाता है उनसे अच्छा आ तुम कैसे हैं बेटा बच्चे कैसे सब बच्चे भी माशाल्लाह ठीक है मैं भी ठीक हूँ सब दुआ है तुम्हारी क्या उम्र हो गई बेटा चाहिए अच्छी हो गई बेटा कैसी तुम्हारी आवाज जरा वो हो रही हाँ मैं तो चच्ची बोलने से कोई चाह नहीं बेटा अल्लाह को बोलना हाँ इसीलिए मैंने बोला 
ہر بلا مصیبت سے بچائے اللہ اللہ کے رسول اپنے آپ جو امان میں رکھے آپ لوگوں کو آمین 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 داؤٹس گینگ از کالڈ کمپنی بیکاز دا ڈون آلویز ٹیکس کیئر آف آل ہز پیپل دیر فیملیز اینڈ دا نیٹ ورک اسپریڈ اکراس ٹو ہز فیملی فرینڈز اینڈ نیبرس لائک مجید کالیا اینڈ ہز وائف ٹو میک دیز کالس داؤد یوز ہز وائس اوور انٹرنیٹ پروٹوکال اٹ ہیلپس ہم ٹو ہڈ ونک سرویلنس بائی دا انٹیلیجنس فورسز ود دیویش سنگھ ان ممبئی بیورو رپورٹ انڈیا ٹوڈے We've got a big news break coming out of the India Alliance meeting in the national capital. We're going to tell you that there may be some kind of suggestion doing the rounds over who could be the prime ministerial face of the India Alliance. All that and much more to do with the MP's suspension drama. That's the big story coming up next. اور بھی مہتوپورن ہو جاتی ہے جس طریقے سے تانا شاہی رویہ کیندر سرکار نے اپنایا ہے یا تو وہ ہمیں بتا دیں کہ پارلیمنٹ کی اب ضرورت ہی نہیں ہے کہ ہم اس کو سرکشہ نہیں دے سکتے اور ہمیں اپوزیشن کی ضرورت نہیں ہے ہم تانا شاہی کی طریقے سے پی ایم او اب نیا ہیڈ کوارٹرز ہوگا جہاں سے سارا لیجسلیٹو بزنس ہوگا اس طریقے سے پاور کا مس یوز کرنا جنتا کے بیچ لے کر جانا ضروری ہے جنتا کو بتانا ضروری ہے کہ آج ہی ممبرز آف پارلیمنٹ کے ساتھ ہو رہا ہے کہ ان کے ادھیکاروں کا حنن ہو رہا ہے کل آپ سبھی کے ساتھ ہوگا It's an alliance of a few parties who are just interested to save themselves for the corruption that they have done. And Adir Babu is trying to say that, you know, he will not uh, come to terms with Rahul Gandhi's decision that, uh, you know, they will be in support or in alliance with TMC in the Lok Sabha vote. These are all theatrics and all Natak. They are all together. Natak, they, they do Natak. that you know we are against tmc's corruption but inside they are all together il rashto hospital the entire hospital cordoned off receiving the that vip treatment that he uh, is ca- currently receiving because of that clout he has and what we know is that he's uh, the residents in karachi itself uh, there's not one house that we could say for sure that this is where Dawood Ibrahim stays. In fact, uh, there are multiple houses in Karachi itself that Dawood Ibrahim uh, is set to own. And a bunch of them include the White House in Clifton, Karachi, the 30th Street in Karachi. He has a residence there. In Defense Housing Authority, Karachi, he's set to have a house there. In Nurabad, Karachi, he's set to have a house there. So it's, it's really hard to understand where exactly Dawood Ibrahim lives uh, and who he lives with uh, right after he got married for the second time. He's said to have moved to Pakistan, uh, but still no clarity on which of the residents he actually lives in or he moves about. And, and that's what uh, likely uh, is the situation. Uh, in Margala Road, Islamabad as well, he's said to have a home. So no compliance from the Pakistan government or authorities so far on handing over Dawood Ibrahim or implicating him in the... crimes that he's committed so far. Make your media plan smarter with India Today Live TV on your connected devices. Amplify your brand with 100 million smart internet viewers. To advertise, mail us at sales at ajtag.com.
सदन की मर्यादाओं को मत तोड़े नो मैसिव स्लोगनियरिंग फ्लैक एंड रॉकस politics peaks over parliament security breach which is 5 days left for the winter session uproar continued in the lok sabha on monday sabhapati mahoday main aaj ki kar suchi mein mere naam ke samne the opposition persisted with its demand for a statement by home minister amit shah more opposition mps were suspended from lok sabha raising the total number of mps barred from parliament to 92 While the opposition is up in arms, the government made an appeal to let the house function. Practically, this is the last session. So, that's why I am asking you to join hands and join hands. This was the decision made. In your view, we will not take it. We have given 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 it. We चाहे बीजेपी पार्टी और सत्तरवीं पार्टी इसको माने या ना माने अगर उस दिन कोई घातक हथियार लेके ये लोग अंदर आते तो क्या होते ये सोचकर हम हैरान होते हैं ऑन संडे इन एन इंटरव्यू टू अ हिंदी डेली प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी कंडेम द इंसिडेंट एंड सेड द सिक्योरिटी ब्रीच वाज नॉट टू बी टेकन लाइटली एंड शुड नॉट बी पॉलिटिसाइज्ड The suspension of members of parliament from both houses has only added fuel to the fire. Repeated assurances from the Lok Sabha speaker that the two are not linked has not borne any breakthrough. So expect stormy scenes to continue, derailing all constructive discussion in both houses of parliament until end of session. With camera person Pawan Kumar Polomi Saha in Delhi for India Today. Weather forecast now. Delhi, maximum 23 and minimum 9 degrees. Mumbai, maximum 29 and minimum 25 degrees. Kolkata, maximum 26 and minimum 13 degrees. Bangalore, maximum 26 and minimum 16 degrees. Chennai, maximum 27 and minimum 24 degrees. Hyderabad maximum 27 and minimum 17 degrees In politics everyone has an opinion but i have the data whose stock is rising whose graph is falling track india's political stock exchange unmatched unmissable data analytics the only show on news tv where numbers do the talking india's most credible poll tracker the political stock exchange with rahul kamal only on india today presented by आर्सलोर मित्तल ने पॉन स्टील इंडिया बनाऊंगा मैं बनेगा भारत म्यूचुअल फंड्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूटर करें शुरू ड्रिवन बाय आउदी मेरा आग्रह आपसे स्टॉमी पार्लियामेंट विंटर सेशन Never seen before purge of MPs. Suspended MP count at 141 now. 
massive government versus opposition 